Welcome to Shruti Out Loud, a podcast where I invite guests from different walks of life to share their stories of following their passion, success, and happiness, which in turn motivates our listeners to follow their heart. Hi and welcome back to Shruti Out Loud podcast. So um uh, guys first of all a very 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 happy new year. I really hope that 2022 was wonderful to you and I also hope that uh, the this year 2023 is going to give you um a lot of happiness, a lot of joy, a lot of success and anything that keeps you going on and well that is the motive of this podcast also that we keep bringing you guests who bring in um something from their life maybe a story maybe some motivation maybe some something that you need to know to keep going on in your life in a productive way in a healthy way and yeah that's all uh, shruti out loud podcast is about so talking about today's guest um well today's guest is somebody who uh, is going to talk about a topic that we have never really discussed on this podcast before like yes we have a uh, we have had different people from different um i would say um different niches but this is something that we have never talked about so i'm quite excited about this episode so um well um here in this episode we will be delving into the world of male reproductive health with the help of leading andrologist and expert and expert dr gautam so we will be talking about topics related to the male reproductive system including common health concerns um treatments and strategies for maintaining good reproductive health so whether you are a man looking to better understand your own reproductive health or simply interested in learning more about this important field then this episode is for you then this podcast is for you so let's bring mr um uh, dr gautam banga on board and start the conversation with him hello dr banga Hi Shruti how are you doing It's a... I'm doing really well thank you So how is the new year going on for you Uh the first week has been quite wonderful I would say uh I have been productive and yeah it looks like it you know I'm going to keep going on with that for the rest of the year so that is what I'm looking forward to yeah, How about be... you Yeah the year is good except for the winter it's quite chilly Oh yes morning, but still we are going ahead with the work the work keeps going Absolutely absolutely that keeps going on and i totally agree with you on the winter part that that here uh, right now in delhi it's so chilling like every day when you wake up uh, it's a it's a task <laughs> it's a task to get out of the bed and be like okay you know what you have to keep going on you have to work so i think everybody is just pushing themselves to keep going on yeah just wait for the good time to good weather to come in but it's, it's winter is yeah. also in general you can enjoy the winters also Yeah that is true and also i think it's more or less about just 2 uh, 3 weeks more and then we are back to the changing season and then again we'll be talking about summers and then it's it's an ongoing cycle really so we can now start with the discussion about the endology issues and uh, what absolutely absolutely so first of all dr manga i would really like to thank you for coming on board and picking up this topic because i think um nobody on my podcast has uh, ever talked about it so far so i'm really looking forward to ask you some important questions which i think um everybody not just i won't just be talking about men but even women even they need to understand because you know um, our world is made up of men and women so why to just you know um, hit like one segment of the audience because you know we are all um, in the end you know uh, we are all evolving together we are all living together Yes, so andrology. Uh, since I'm an andrologist, so I'll give you a brief idea about the andrology. So a uh, few years back, everybody was talking about uh, women health, how they can have a, a good uh, sexual life, good healthy reproductive life, and all about how ma- women can improve their looks or their uh, the way they live. But uh, some way we feel that the men are left behind. Uh, and so andrology is all about uh, bringing awareness about those thing and to actually treat men uh, the uh, whether they are facing any issues with their sexual health or whether they have any issue with their reproductive health or male infertility so andrology is a subspecialty of uh, urology 
and it it has come up as a individual speciality now and it deals with the men's health health the aspect which are consider which consists of uh, erectile issues uh, ejaculatory issues or if they have facing any other problem with their sexual uh, ability and the other aspect uh, the other part of andrology is male infertility so if somebody is facing sub fertility or some issue in having a child then the andrologist is the right person to be approached and uh, they can consult andrologist they can talk to the andrologist about their problem and we are always there to help them out absolutely dr banga so here i would like to ask you one question um, is there any stigma related to this um as in do people talk about it often because honestly like i have a lot of um, males in my life uh, friends family brothers um, a lot of people who are quite close and you know we we do talk about these things but somehow from what i can really think about is nobody has ever talked about these things like you know they never really discuss or so is there a stigma around it or what is your take on it oh my my we are living in the men's world till now we are still in the men's world and a man is a man a man should not discuss his problems okay because uh, the ego is associated with that the maleness is associated with that that a man cannot have any problem and they should not discuss it in the public or with even with their parents or friends or family but uh, uh, yeah things are changing we uh, in western countries uh, people are more open to discuss their problem just they want somebody to share the things but in india nobody wants to talk about it but i feel the covid has changed the situation a lot a lot you know pehle previously like uh, most of the people young male even 30 35 were so busy with their job money success fame so they have, they they put they placed everything on back seat the whole health issue they used to put everything on the back seat and they always want to be in the driving seat rushing from one place to another working late hours but then covid came and then people started realizing no life is much more beyond this job and everything and then they realized that their health in all aspect not just the reproductive health or the sexual health all aspect of health are equally important and that should be taken care of so the indian society is gradually changing after those two years of pandemic when we all were most of the time indoor we were with our family we realized that a healthy life is much more important than a wealthy life so people started discussing they started searching things on net they started searching for people with whom you can discuss their problem and they also realized that they have to be active on sexual front also they have to give uh, they have to be active with their partners and so they so they started coming out with all queries they read us online offline and yes andrology started getting good number of patients post covid so people are uh, still still a taboo in two tier three tier cities but big metros big cities are opening up people are willing to discuss yeah like you know i can uh, definitely tell you this that um, uh, as women we do talk about everything like you know amongst friends or sisters or even with our mothers we we tend to talk about these things but men they usually don't even talk amongst themselves forget about you know talking to us <laughs> they don't even talk amongst themselves so i have like uh, some people that i am close to in my life so whenever i try to even you know bring something up and they react like you know no we are not talking about it and i usually just you know try and tell them that you know there is no big deal like we can talk about it but no they just don't but i as you said that hopefully things are changing hopefully we will come to a point where you know talking about anything uh, and everything is easy for everybody not just women but even for men uh, that is a uh, i think that would be a healthy world that we would be living in then very true shruti so there are various health group which are coming up there are very, uh, there are many whatsapp group facebook facebook groups so they are uh, there to for you to discuss the things but yes uh, still a man doesn't want to share their problem with the men Uh, until unless that man is a doctor or an endologist, uh, so most of the patient who come to us, they come alone. They don't bring their family members along uh, for their problems. They just want to keep everything uh, under the cover. They they don't even uh, take their prescription back home. They just take a snapshot, save it in a in a secret folder somewhere, 
and uh, so i think um, um, men still have this uh, thing that men cannot uh, have any issues in their life and if they have any issue then they go going to some kind of depression or they they lose their confidence so i just want to tell them uh, through this podcast that uh, a man in, is also a human being it's at par with any any female so they can also have all those issues which a female can have and they should not feel shy bad or uh, depressed they should open up their uh, queries they should reach to people not just to enroll they should talk with uh, their family member their friend their wife their sister and they can talk about them and i i'll tell you that will really help them i hope you a lot you will be much uh, comfortable you will be more happy and more confident once you have shared your problems with others i totally agree with you on that so uh, coming to the next question uh, dr bangla could you tell us what are some common conditions that andrologists treat so when when we when we do andrology practice most of the patient who come to us <clears throat> are of two main categories one is uh, sexual dysfunction uh, in which a patient can have uh, decreased desire libido is on the lower end or uh, they are not able to perform well in their sexual activity they are either facing erectile issues or premature ejaculation uh they can have uh, situational issues also when they are comfortable with at one place and not at other place a uh, male in their late 40s or late 50s they will have some deformities of uh, genitals and then they are not able to do sexual activity that so that is one category of patient who frequently come to us for consultation and uh, examination and if they require we provide them uh, treatment the second uh, category of patient who comes to us are uh, having male infertility or subfertility so these are the patient who have either uh, low sperm count or the sperm count is not there it's a zero it's which is known as azoospermia and some people have uh, secondary infertility that they have one child and then after a long gap of 5 10 years when they try to have another child they are not able to have the pregnancy so that the second category and we take care of both the both kind of uh, patients and uh, that's what andrology work is all about yeah. right um dr banga here i would like to again go a little off uh, the list of our questions um so these days um as we know that a lot of people are living a very stressful life and uh, they are going through some medical treatments or um, some medicines which clearly mentioned that you know this is going to affect your libido this is going to affect your um the the the, the I, i don't know how to say it but maybe the, the desires so what would you like to say about this part because you know this is becoming a norm so is this something that you being a doctor has to address quite a lot yes yeah, shruti so uh, i'll tell around 50 to 60% of patient who comes to us with sexual dysfunction especially the decreased desire libido and erectile issues most like 60% of them are anti depressant or anti psychotic so i either they had some stress issues in the past or they are going through some stress problems in the in the present time but many of them they just want some miracle drug to take care of them so they just rush to a psychiatrist and psychologist and says doctor i am depressed i need a treatment so i think uh, they should learn to de-stress themselves uh, at workplace as well as at home and uh, the family therapy is the best therapy no medicine can actually take care of that take the place of that therapy so i had my advice to all the young male or the male who are in 30s 40s no need to start antidepressant depressant at the drop of a hat don't do that first try to relax yourself every problem has a solution no problem is permanent in life so you have to come out of that zone that that problem is going to kill you no problem can kill anyone uh, you can always get over that and you can be the killer you can kill that problem so get over that de stress yourself uh, eat uh, eat good live a healthy life and i'm sure you will be out of that depression don't take medicine all medicine have some side effect um maybe as a doctor i am saying that but yes in some situation we have to prescribe drug because patient desperately need that but there are many people who can actually get rid of the medicine 
and uh, the side effect related to the medicine. So depression is the biggest enemy of your sexual activity, your sexual health. Better try to manage that by behavior therapy, social therapy, family therapy. Thank you for uh, answering that question. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, Doctor, what advice do you have for men who are concerned about their reproductive health? I know this sounds quite similar to what you have just addressed, but that was more or less about uh, people when they are stressed out. But this is on a more generic line. So what would you like to advise here? So uh, a young male who is worried about reproductive health, so first and foremost live a healthy life how uh, that you have to decide but my advice is you should have a exercise schedule at least 45 minutes to an hour a day it can be in form of jogging running cycling aerobics whichever zumba even zumba you can do all the zumbas and all the dance classes also can burn those calories and keep you healthy so any kind of exercise no no one uh, no single exercise can actually be helpful you can just mean do a mix and match you can combine all the things that will keep you more motivated so one day you can have a cycling other day you can have a zumba class second is uh, manage your work time don't kill yourself over work no sense in working from 8 till 12 midnight uh, you will not be you will not have time for the family you will not have the time for the partner so the question of sexual activity doesn't come in so restrictive working hours, I know that's, there are some days when you have to work for long hours, but some other days you should take up time, give yourself a break, eat healthy. Um, I know nowadays everybody is moving toward junk food because that easily you can prepare easily or you can get it through all the online apps. But if you can make a good meal for yourself in a day, do that. That will keep you engaged also and uh, you can select what you want to eat. Sometimes online apps doesn't give you much of an option, uh, healthy options, but you should always make a one meal a day. You should prepare yourself in a healthy way and uh, that will keep you running and going. Addiction should be on the minimal. No, I cannot say uh, don't take any because most of the people are motivated with that because they have social gatherings, so they consume alcohol. But there's always a term known as social alcoholism. So if you're doing it once in a week, once in 15 days, consuming a 60 ml or 100 ml of alcohol is fine. But don't overdo that. Don't indulge in addiction, any kind of addiction on a regular basis. Uh, do not smoke. Smoking is it's one thing which can actually affect your erectile profile a lot. So if you're consuming, if you're uh, taking, say, if you're smoking cigarette, four or five cigarettes a day, even that can actually damage the things. It can do a lot of damage over a long period of time. So exercise, healthy food, de-stress, give yourself some time to relax, talk to your family, and uh, say no to alcohol, smoking, and any kind of addiction. And don't consume too many drugs uh, as antipsychotic or antidepressant, as I mentioned earlier. Right. And you are so true about these apps that are there out there in the market to sort of, you know, entice you at every meal. But the idea is to keep reminding yourself that, you know, the healthier option is at home. So try and go for that. Yeah, so I'm not against those apps. I know they are very handy. <laughs> and even I use those apps quite frequently. because my yeah. kids are that. But as I said, one meal should be at home right. and a good healthy meal. Right, absolutely. So th that's what you know. They yeah, they are there to entice you, but you have to keep reminding yourself that you know you try and maybe you know eat something at home. Otherwise, it's always there, and there are a lot of um, options who also give the organic and this and that. There's uh, everything in the market right now, but yes, we have to keep that in mind. Uh, Doctor Banga, here as you mentioned that you know uh, the smoking part. Um, I, want, or I would also like to ask you that, yes, cigarettes, when we talk about cigarettes, yes, that point has been taken care of. But um, the ongoing issue that we know among the youth is that um, the, the smoking up part, whether it's uh, weed, marijuana, hash, or whatever you want to call it. So how does that impact 
is there uh, are, uh, like have there been studies because you know honestly i haven't really heard about it i haven't heard anything about it so could you maybe uh, shed some light on this as well so shruti uh, again the thing is anything which is uh, addiction going to harm you anything in excess affects uh, i'm not promoting anything first of all i want to make it very clear i'm not promoting anything uh, these recreational drugs are there in the market but the thing is then these patient doesn't come to us with a proper history that they are taking these recreational drugs so very difficult for us to analyze the side effect of these drugs on a long term basis smoking is something which everybody comes up and say that yes they smoke and we also try to elicit this history whether you are smoking how many cigarettes you are smoking and for how long you are doing this but uh, people always try to hide the uh, history or the knowledge about the recreation drug because they these are always in the category of addiction so any any addiction is not good for health i mean and these recreation drug which can actually lead to addiction should be avoided if you have consumed it once in the past or twice in the past is fine and that again i don't know i'm not propagate i'm not uh, telling people to do that but if you have done it one or twice is fine uh, stop it stop it when you come to know that this is not good for you my advice and all this is do not take any kind of recreation drug because we really don't know what are the actual long term side effects of that and i'm talking about the side effect beyond addiction if you are addicted to that you lose thing financially you lose social life and you get more dependent on that so you can actually affect your working time your schedules and that is one aspect but we are not very much clear about the long term side effects definitely these drugs these recreation drugs have their own side effect so better not to get into all that you are young you can get addicted to a gym also that is more healthy you can get addicted to a healthy lifestyle that's more uh, motivational and more uh, helpful for you in the future absolutely and as you just said that you know people obviously they don't uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, when people they come up to you they will never talk about that you know we have been taking this or that it's much more simpler to just say that you know yeah we smoke so thank you thank you so much dr banga for addressing this question because i wasn't really sure that you know if this is something that uh, we can talk about but i'm so glad that you have clearly uh, stated that any kind of yeah it's it's better that you just stop So uh moving on to the next question how has the field of andrology evolved in the past few years and what changes do you see uh, on the horizon So as I said the andrology got a very good uh, kick start not exactly kick start but a boost post covid people are coming up and uh, equally the pharma industry is also gearing up for the this branch so they are coming up with new medication which can help uh, in improving the erectile profile Uh, I'll tell you very truly, we lack a lot. Lot if we consider ourselves uh, in comparison with the uh, Western countries, the the field is much more evolved, and uh, that is because the market is bigger. So the pharma industries are more driven uh, to get, bring new drugs and to introduce new therapies. But uh, Indian uh, population, though the Indians are almost 1.4 billion at the moment, but since it was a social taboo and the social stigma. so gradually the number of patients are increasing and so the pharma companies are coming up with new drug which are more effective and uh, there are various other therapies which have come up in the in the field so andrology is evolving it will take some more time say around 3 4 more years and uh, we will have good uh, uh, ways to treat all these kind of patients Uh, but still uh, at the moment also we we are well sufficient we are self sufficient we are well sufficient uh, we are well equipped to take care of uh, all these kind of patients and we have the best of the therapies and best of the treatment available in india and uh, future is good uh it feels good to hear that <laughs> that yes we are on the right path and yes we are on the path of evolving So uh okay so Dr Banga here I would like to ask you what are some common misconceptions about andrology and male reproductive health that you encounter in your practice Yeah Shruti so again I'll divide the thing into two part one is the male infertility part and the other is the erectile dysfunction part 
So uh, if we talk about the erectile issues, uh, people always say that uh, I'm perfectly fine. That's the first thing they always come up with that. I, I'm not, uh, I don't have any problem. Only my wife feels that I have a problem. So they have to come out of that. They have to accept, first, first and foremost, they have to accept that they have some issues. Uh, second thing is uh, they don't want to take medicine. They want something permanent. Okay, so I always tell them, if you have a diabetes, there's nothing permanent. There's no permanent treatment for that. So if you have diabetes, you have to take tablets and then uh, your sugar is under control. So you have to manage, like it's just, just like diabetes. The erectile issues are just like diabetes. So you have to take care of your diet. You have to take care of your exercise. And along with that, you have to take medicine. So uh, they always say, doctor, give me something which is which will cure it. So I always tell them there is no cure for that. There is a treatment for that. So it's treatable, not curable. And they have so people have to accept that they have they might have to take medicine whenever they want to do any sexual act. They might have to take the medicine for the rest of their life, and uh, till till the time they want a uh, good sexual uh, life. So for till that time they have to take these medicine. So that they have to accept that and. Uh, these medicines are very safe. They have already clinically tried, the clinical trials have already been conducted. They are very safe. Except for one or two uh, contraindications, it can be given to most of the patients. And uh, they are very potent medicine. They work on like with a wonder drug, I'll say. So don't be afraid. I'll also tell patients, don't be afraid of uh, these medicine. You're not going to get addicted to that. These are not recreational drugs. These are treatment. They are the, the drugs for the treatment, not recreational drugs. So don't take it as a recreational drug. Take it as a treatment. If you talk about the male infertility, again, the since it's a social, social stigma, so they don't want to go for a even for a simple semen analysis because they are afraid that if something uh, is found wrong in them, then they are the, they will be considered the culprit. So they don't even go for a proper checkup. So most of the time is the female who has to be a, be the brunt of uh, infertility. But now, since the couple are getting educated, most of them, both the, both the partners are working in uh, MNCs or some government institutions. So they come together and uh, most of the time uh, we subject both the partners for investigation to find out the cause. And uh, we have to convince, we have to, we have to talk on uh, with the male, male for even for 15, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes to convince him that there's something wrong with him, not with the female. So they always say that, doctor, everything is fine with me. It's, it's my wife who's facing infertility. So I have to, I have to revive, uh, revert it back and I have to tell them that, no, you both are facing infertility, not your wife is facing infertility. So you both as a couple are facing infertility and in 50% of cases, male is the uh, person who is actually at the wrong end. So, uh, so it's a bit difficult for a male to accept it, but yes, gradually they are accepting the things. Absolutely. I'm so glad that uh, we are having this discussion on this podcast because I really think that these things, they need to be addressed to let men know that, you know, it's okay. It's absolutely fine. And you don't have to uh, put yourself in a place where you are uh, to be this uh, this perfect uh, person who uh, you know who cannot have some problems because it is quite all right even if you do it's quite all right and if there is a treatment then what is the issue and we are living in a world wherein most of the things they can be taken care of so I am so glad doctor that you are talking about these things and I'm so glad that you are out there and people can actually come and you know talk to you and they can be okay with all these facts so Thank you so much for being a part of this episode. And before leaving, is there anything else that you would like our listeners, our audience to know about andrology or male reproductive health? Is there anything, any other point that you would like to mention? So Shruti, I just want to summarize that uh, I know being a man, it's very difficult to accept the flaws. But yes, even being a man, we can have all kinds of issues, health issues. And uh, we should not feel bad about it. First of all, we should not feel bad about it. That's one thing I want to tell them. You can like, it's just like cough, cough and cold. You can have cough and cold any time of the year. So you can also have other issues in your body because it's a machine. It's a, it's a body which can have uh, fault in any part of it. So don't feel bad. If you have any issue, uh, you can consult an entrologist and uh, he, can be a, he can become a good friend of yours. You can discuss all your issues with him. And he's the right person to provide uh, you with a good counseling 
uh, examination and the treatment, whichever is best for you. So don't feel bad, don't feel shy, don't feel depressed. We are always there to help you out as an enrologist. And wish you, wish everyone a good health, good reproductive, good sexual health, and male health is going to stay. It's something which is going to stay in, in the coming time. Absolutely. Thank you once again, Dr. Banga, for uh, taking out time for this podcast and addressing all these questions. And there were some questions I know that were uh, something that, you know, just came <laughs> and you uh, you answered them very patiently. So thank you so much for your time and for the knowledge that you have shared with our audience. Um, hopefully, maybe we might just, you know, bring you back for another episode on something else, like some other topic that we can definitely touch on. It was a pleasure talking to you. It will be a pleasure again talking to you in future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manga. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. All right, uh, audience, it was so good to have this conversation with uh, Dr. Banga. I think uh, we definitely touched upon a lot of topics, a lot of questions that are there in a lot of people's head, but they just don't talk about it. So I hope this episode really gives you that um, uh, safe space to talk about it and to know that it is quite okay to discuss these things with your family, with your wife, with your partner, with your uh, whosoever there is in your life. And even, even with your friends, amongst male friends, it is okay. <laughs> this is not a taboo. This is not uh, a stigma. So let's try and break this in this way that it is okay. You can talk about it. That's that's just about it. So guys, thank you so much for being a part of this session. And I'll be back with another episode, with another story, with another topic that we, um, I think as a society, we need to address or we need to talk about. So have a good time, have a good weekend, have a good day, whatever time you're listen listening this to, whatever time you're watching this at, just a lot of good wishes to you all. I'll see you soon with another episode on Shruti Out Loud podcast. Thank you. Shruti Out Loud welcomes all stories. It can be a brand, it can be an organization, or it can be a person. The only thing common would be passion for life. Please subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Ghana Podcast, and every other platform where you can hear this. Please leave a review as that helps my podcast to grow. Thank you once again. See you for the next episode. Bye.